Have you ever wondered what would happen if you would change the time signature of your song or composition? Or maybe the concept of time signatures is not really clear to you yet. In this video I will show you the three most common used time signatures and how you can use them in your own music. Hey everybody, Xander here. Welcome to Learning Music Skills, the place where I talk about all kinds of music topics for becoming a better songwriter, producer and musician. Let's get creative. For the sake of this video, I have written a chord progression and later on also a melody, which we will adjust to all the different time signatures and their variations. This is also going to be our first example. Let's have a look and a listen. As we can see in the score, this example is in 4-4. Four, four. What this means is that we have four quarter notes in every bar. So let's get started with some technical things. It is important that we accentuate the first beat of every bar. We do this by playing it a little bit louder. Actually you can compare it to when you want to emphasize a certain word in a sentence. If we don't accentuate the first beat of every bar, we might have a difficult time finding out in what bar and on what beat we exactly are. And not least important, also the music will sound rather dull and monotonous if everything sounds the same. Just have a listen to this example, where all the notes sound the same and are played with the same strength, so there are no accents. So probably you agree with me that this sounds rather mechanical and dull, right? Well, in 4-4 four, four time signature, we also slightly accentuate the third beat. This gives us a division of two accentuated beats and two unaccentuated beats. Music needs to breathe. There should be an ebb and flow and it needs to move. And this is one of the ways that we can achieve this goal. Just listen to the first example again and notice the difference. It also happens that in many styles and compositions we accentuate the second and the fourth beat instead of the first and the third. When we accentuate the second and the fourth beat, that's called accentuating the back beat. Just have a listen to what it would sound like when we accentuate the second and the fourth beat. So even though both of the examples are in 4-4, the character is completely different due to the fact that we're accentuating either the first and the third or the second and the fourth. So this is a great thing to remember. And this takes us to example number two, the 3-4 time signature. One thing that 4-4 and 3-4 time signature have in common is that both of them are counted in quarter notes. But instead of 4 per bar, now we only have 3 beats per bar. Normally with 3-4 only the first beat is accentuated. So in the entire bar we only accentuate the first beat. Let's have a look and listen to the example. So I told you that we only accentuate the first beat in a 3-4, right? 
Well, let's now accentuate the second beat and see if that changes the character. Let's check it out. Sounded quite nice, right? Well, now let's take it even a step further. We can treat the material a bit more flexible. Let me show you an example where I combine both of them. First round, I will accentuate the first beat, and the second round that I play it, I will accentuate the second beat. So we combine both of them actually in one composition. See how nice it sounds when you combine both of them? It's very refreshing. Now let's take a look at example number 3, which is the 6-8 time signature. In this time signature, we're dealing with 6 notes per bar. 6 eighth notes, to be exact. Let's listen to what this example sounds like. You might agree that this example is a lot more lighthearted and gently rolling forwards compared to the other examples. So it's a bit of a technical matter but I need to mention it. In 6-8 we divide the beats a bit differently compared to the 3-4 and the 4-4. Instead of just playing 6-8 notes in a row, we divide them in two groups. So two groups of three. If you'd want to notate that, you would be left with two dotted quarter notes. The most important thing to remember is that we have two accentuated beats in a 6-8 time signature. The first one, which is the most accentuated, and then the fourth one, which is slightly less accentuated. Let's have a listen to what it would sound like when I would strum the rhythm, but mainly only play the two accentuated beats, which are the two dotted quarter notes. So it sounds nice and lively, right? But now comes the interesting part. Now we're going to see how we can use this in your own music. So I have some tips lined up. Tip number one. So tip number one is when you've already written something but not quite satisfied with how it sounds, you can try and transferring this to a different time signature. So for example, originally your melody was in 4-4, maybe you switch it to a 6-8. Tip number two. Experiment with what beat you are accentuating. Just look back at my first two examples and see how different they sound when you accentuate a different beat. This is definitely a great trick to use in your own music. Tip number three. Only switch to a different time signature when you're in a certain section of your song or composition. For example, only in the bridge you would play 6-8 and in the rest of the song everything is in 4-4 time signature. Tip number four. This is a bit of an expert tip and it is a little bit of a puzzle, but what if you write something in 4-4 time signature and then you switch it to 3-4. So you make it work in 3-4 time signature and then you switch it to a different time signature or maybe the one that you started with and see if this is taking your song to a new place. In any case, as I already mentioned before, it's important that your music breathes and that it has motion and your time signature and the accentuated beats have a very important role in this. So never forget. If you have any questions and you're looking for more information, I give one-on-one -on -one online classes. Just write me an email, you can find it below or in the description. And as always, if you have any topic requests, just drop them in the comment section. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And for now, see you next time.